My name is Michael Bruff. I serve as the Deputy Director of Leadership Roundtable. We are a Catholic nonprofit that partners with church leaders to uh, advance best practices and accountability in church management and leadership. I have 30 years experience of working in professional ministry, training lay ecclesial ministers, priests, bishops, in dioceses across the country and in 13 other countries. Stewardship is a key element of evangelization and it's central to who we are as ministry leaders and as ministry disciples. We're all familiar with the concept of stewardship from the many scriptural references. I'm particularly focused today on Luke chapter 12, where Jesus says, who is the faithful and prudent steward? The same question that Jesus posed in scripture is a question for us today. What does it mean to be a prudent and faithful steward of all the many gifts he has given us? Each of us is called to be that faithful steward in our ministry setting. Living as missionary disciples suggests there are two important aspects of stewardship which we're going to explore today managing, supervising, and developing people, and having sound business practices and ethical standards in our ministry settings. For all of us as a faithful steward, we are called to be servant leaders for the gifts that God has given us. We can only be successful in forming missionary disciples if we take care of the gifts and resources that we have been given. If we are going to be a servant leader for others in ministry, we ask ourselves this question, how do I know how well I'm doing as a leader? How is my growth as a missionary disciple taking place? How do I know what my strengths are so that I can build on those? And how do I know what my development needs are, perhaps my blind spots as a leader? One way for us to find out how we're doing is to seek feedback from those we minister with and those we minister to. Living as missionary disciples also highlights and emphasizes the importance of managing, supervising, and developing people. The prudent and faithful steward cares for all of their resources. And the primary resource for us in ministry is the people that we have been gifted to work with and to work for. The servant leader begins not with the managing and supervising of others, but with developing our own self. How can I grow as a missionary disciple? How can I grow as a servant leader? And once I've done that, then how can I collaborate with others to help them to grow? A servant leader is responsible for leading others to reach their full potential to manage any conflict that arises within the team, and to respond to changing circumstances to make sure that our vision and our goal for forming missionary disciples is as effective as it can be. For ministry formation to be successful, communications within the team and the pastoral care of all members is essential. In the church, we can learn a lot from other well-run organizations about how to manage human resources, how to manage the personnel and be a good leader. But for us in the Catholic context, it is so much more. We are not simply managers, we are stewards. We are stewards of a vocational calling. We are called to care for those that we are work with. We are not simply managers, we are colleagues, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. The final element of intentional stewardship that living as missionary disciples emphasizes for us is the need for sound business practices and rigorous ethical standards in all of our ministry settings. While we're not corporate managers and we're certainly not bean counters, we are managing these resources for mission. We have a responsibility as the faithful steward to be able to account for our use of resources, to be transparent 
with our resources and how we have used them and where we have succeeded and where we need to do more. A common question I receive when I'm working with parishes and dioceses is, what are those best practices? What are those ethical standards that we are called to? Catholic Standards for Excellence is one example of where we have put together all the range of best practices for any parish, any ministry setting that is looking to say, how do the best ministries, how do the best parishes carry out their stewardship responsibilities? This is everything from managing personnel to the advisory councils, the finance council, the pastoral council, the stewardship council, the ministry councils of our parishes. How can we run effective meetings? How can we make sure that we have a diversity of perspectives at the table as we are gathering together? There are important legal and ethical and canonical principles which we need to make sure are in place whenever we do anything in ministry. And then we need to be transparent and accountable with those whose resources they have given to us in our ministry. Our approach to best practices in management in ministry is one of co-responsibility, ordained in laity, working together, being transparent, being accountable to one another and to those who have generously contributed their gifts to the ministry. It is important to have the expertise of those who can serve on finance councils and pastoral councils, those who can help vision and create a pastoral plan for the church, not just a budget, but a plan that says, this is how we are going to use the resources that we have to achieve our evangelization goals. Two important bodies in the parish ministry context are the Pastoral Council and the Finance Council, helping us to uphold these standards which are so important. It's important for us in our ministry setting to be aware of what resources we have available to us and to make sure that the viability of our various ministry programs are in place, to make sure that we will be able to sustain that particular ministry focus. And if our situation changes, if the resources available to us change, if leaders move or are changed, then to make sure that we adapt and refocus our energies to make sure that we're going to achieve realistic goals. One of the best practices that many parishes are carrying out is in the area of transparency reporting back to donors, to benefactors, to parishioners, exactly what the budget situation is, what their donations were used for, and the impact that it had. Sometimes it's important to get an outside audit of such funds. As we carry out our pastoral plans for our ministry and for the parish, it's important to remember that these are not static document, five-year plans that get put on a shelf. We're constantly facing change within our parish and ministry context. Those could be demographic changes, they could be resource changes, it could be restructuring at a diocesan level. The important thing for us in our pastoral planning is to be concerned with the question, how are we serving the community? How are we meeting the needs? How are we helping to form missionary disciples? It's so important for us to cultivate a culture of generosity for joy to be a part of our ministerial experience, for us to recognize and celebrate the many gifts that we've been given and to ensure that we are using those gifts to achieve the mission. We have a shared mission in the church to help establish the kingdom of God here on earth, to share the gospel, it is important for a pastoral council to gather with the pastor, to gather with any pastoral staff, ministry leaders, to develop a shared vision for how that mission will be implemented in our particular context, in our particular community. It's important that members of the pastoral council be formed, be selected as people who are open, 
to the movement of the Holy Spirit, who recognize that discernment of the will of God is what they are called to do. Our pastoral councils, indeed all of our ministerial teams in a parish, need to be reflective of the diversity of the whole parish community. Not just insiders navel-gazing, but looking out into the parish and hearing and recognizing and responding to the real needs of people in the pews, and indeed not in the pews. Thank you again for the ministerial leadership that you show in your faith community. There are many resources available to you to assist in leadership development, management training, and pastoral planning. My hope and prayer for you is that you will continue to grow in your missionary discipleship, that you will flourish in your ministries.